Welcome to Culture Screen, where we analyze culture. In this episode, we are summarizing the Iliad, written by Homer. In the beginning, the Greek forces have been in Asia Minor for 10 years, fighting against Troy and reclaiming their lost honor. However, neither army has gained enough ground to compel a surrender during these 10 years. While their generals devise strategies and the warriors sharpen their weapons, the Greeks are still stationed outside of Troy's city walls. Agamemnon, the commanding general, Menelaus, king of Sparta, and the brother of Agamemnon, Odysseus, king of Ithaca, and the massive and powerful Ajax the Great are some of the Greek leaders. They are all bloodstained and hardened due to the ongoing war they are a part of. The Greeks have fought the Trojans led by Hector. Hector is Troy's mightiest warrior, and Aeneas, another great warrior, have been pushed back and suppressed by the Greeks' armies. The Greeks think that in time they will win. This is largely due to the fact that they have Achilles on their side. According to the Greeks, he is the greatest fighter who has ever lived. Achilles is described as ferocious and unbeatable. The Greeks know that no one can stand up to Achilles. Not even Hector or a thousand Hectors could defeat him. After Agamemnon insults Achilles in the 10th year of the Great War, Achilles says he will not fight due to his disrespect. Achilles does not allow anyone to talk down to him, not even Agamemnon, the greatest Greek general who commands thousands of men at the time. When Agamemnon and Achilles raid the countryside around Troy, they kidnap two maidens, causing the split between them to widen even further. Chryseis, the daughter of an Apollo priest, is Agamemnon's prize. There is also the lovely Brises, who becomes Achilles' slave mistress. Chryseis, Chryseis' father, offers Agamemnon a ransom for his child, but he refuses. Chryseis then appeals to his patron god Apollo for assistance, and the sun god responds by sending a plague on the Greeks. Several troops die before Agamemnon hears from the fortune teller Calchas, who tells Agamemnon the cause of the plague. Agamemnon unwillingly gives up Chryseis to her father Chryseis because he is unable to fight the sickness. Remember, I am summarizing other works of literature, so subscribe and click on the notification bell to be reminded when I upload the next summary. Also, let me know what your favorite work of literature is so I can summarize it in the future. Thank you for your support. Unfortunately for the Greeks, the arrogant monarch orders his forces to grab Briseis as a replacement for the treasure he has lost. Achilles is enraged by this. Rather than unleashing his fury with his great sword, he flees the battlefield, swearing never to fight for his homeland again. His mother, the sea goddess, Thetis, pleads with Zeus, king of the gods, to shift the tide of war in the Trojans' favor. Agamemnon would be well served by such a turnaround. Zeus, on the other hand, is hesitant to assist in the fighting because the gods of Olympus have picked sides and are actively involved in the fighting daily. It would be fomenting cosmic conflict for him to back one army over the other, Zeus says. Ares, Aphrodite, Apollo, and Artemis are among the gods that favor the Trojans. Athena, Poseidon, and Hera, the wife of Zeus, is on the Greeks' side. If Zeus shows partiality, the skies will erupt into flames. Zeus fears he would never hear the end of it from his wife. But Zeus, the deity of thunder and lightning, is Zeus after all. He knows he can do whatever he pleases. Zeus confers his blessings on the Trojans after being convinced by Thetis. Agamemnon is among the Greeks who soon are eager to board their ships and return home. The onslaught led by Hector has been ferocious indeed. The wise old monarch Nestor, who is 70 years old, encourages Agamemnon to negotiate peace with Achilles. Accepting the advice and promising to return Briseis to Achilles, the arrogant commander, now regretful and fully understanding his wrong treatment of Achilles, takes the advice. When Agamemnon's delegates meet with Achilles, Achilles is spending time with his friend, Patroclus. Patroclus is also a respected and well-known warrior. Achilles, still enraged, rejects the peace offer when he is told that all injustices against him would be rectified. His fury knows no bounds. We read that Patroclus is unable to witness the Trojan assault on his people. So Patroclus decides to borrow Achilles' armor and he enters the battlefield 
dressed as Achilles. As Patroclus chops and cuts his path through the Trojan ranks, the strategy succeeds for a while with the help from Apollo. Hector's spear finally takes down the heroic Patroclus. The Trojan warrior celebrates his victory with a daring final strike and lastly takes off Achilles' armor. Thetis, Achilles' mother, has a fresh suit of armor crafted in Olympus for Achilles. At the insistence of Achilles' mother, Thetis god of the sea, Achilles agrees to resume the combat finally. Achilles is devastated by the loss of his comrade Patroclus and outraged by Hector's bold and daring behavior. The following day, Achilles commands the battlefield with murder and mayhem, terrorizing the enemy ranks. The fields are strewn with Trojan blood. The Trojans, terrified, flee to the safety of Troy and its towering walls. Hector, however, does not run. He foolishly holds his position out of a profound sense of loyalty and responsibility as Troy's protector. His fellow countrymen, along with the gallery of sons, daughters, and wives looking on from the Trojan line of defense, Hector, on the other hand, dies a humiliating end in Achilles' harsh world, where the ability to brutally murder and decapitate is a virtue. After catching him, and easily killing him, Achilles attaches Hector's carcass to his chariot and carries him around Troy's walls. The Greeks finally end up restoring military dominance and victory for them appears near. However, Hector's father, King Priam of Troy, demonstrates that Trojan valor does not die with Hector. He rides across the battlefield in a chariot, putting his life on the line to claim his son's body from Achilles. Priam, on the other hand, is not angry. He knows how to fight and how to be a warrior. He understands that Achilles, the finest of the Greek troops, was forced to slay his son Hector, the finest of the Trojan fighters. Priam humbly embraces Achilles and offers his hand to him. Achilles, moved, greets Priam and instructs an aide to dress Hector's body. Achilles orders his attendant to conceal the corpse in order to save Priam from the shock of seeing his son's corpse. The Iliad ends with the people of Troy mourning for nine days before burning Hector's body and burying the remains in a simple burial with a golden urn. That was the Iliad by Homer. To watch the next literature summary, click on the links in the description or at the end of this video. If you enjoyed this summary, consider clicking like. It really goes a long way toward helping me grow this channel. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. We'll be talking about this war for a thousand years. We upload new videos every week, so subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the like button as well. Click the notification bell to be notified of when we upload these videos. See you on the next episode of Culture Screen.